You are about to witness history in the making. Hi guys, welcome to another Pop Country Gamers podcast. I'm Steve, this is the second time I've said this and you won't know this, so um, your host for this evening, and Hayden, how you doing? I'm doing fine, thanks Steve, and just for, for your cryptic thing for the listeners, it's because he forgot what show he was on again. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means, honestly, please don't rip me for it. <laughs> anyway, I think we better move swiftly on because we've had half an hour trying to get them get the... Um, get to be able to talk to each other so uh yeah we've had a bit of a technical difficulties because uh skype wasn't playing at all tonight and those your leads <laughs> no I've ha- i'm at the moment using like a what a 18 inch lead and it's by far in no way long enough to be able to record this do you want a bit of string i'll give you that that might do it <laughs> well just a longer usb cable to be honest that would go fine <laughs> anyhow so it's been a couple of weeks. We were intending to record um, last middle of, middle of the last week, but things just didn't well, didn't pan out, unfortunately. No. So anyway, so this week, uh, what do I say? Yeah. So on my vinyl front, my other passion, um, I'm starting to get a, my vinyl actually to come to ship from from the states now. Mm. Because I had Halloween 4 and Halloween 5 with the box sleeve, which came with it for free. Um, they arrived a couple of days ago. Uh, and then Halloween 3 has got to come yet. And I pre-ordered, when well I pre-ordered, I bought Halloween 2, which was probably sold out again pretty quickly. And they've got to announce when they're going to put Halloween 1 up. So... I'll get all the whole all the whole set, and I'll have them in the slip box as well. And it looked look pretty cool. Yeah. Um, just something else. I love the horror movies. Dario, Dario Argento soundtracks and movies. I Waxworks picked. I picked up Phenomenon. That arrived Saturday as well. Didn't pay any tax on that one. So I think I think it's just winging a prayer. I think when you when your passes come through the customs, to be honest, isn't there a thing about if you the marked as presents, then you don't pay a tax anywhere? Well, no, but it's got the the um, the last one that came from Waxworks had a Waxworks sticker on it, right? Saying you know Waxworks, and it said it had records on it or something. So you know, mm. I don't know. Anyway. So, so that was that. That looks absolutely gorgeous. It's a double vinyl with um, some weird splattered colours on it. Uh, also, also, I was listening to the Film Eighty Nine Predator podcast over the over on Friday, and it just gave me the urge to go and buy Predator in four K, <laughs> <laughs> which I which I which I watched last night, and uh, also I did I did I did thank the guys for a good podcast. And uh, I put something on there, and I also added to the tweet as well as Arnold, uh, Bill Duke, who plays Mac, because he follows me on Twitter, believe it or not, and he right. and he and he liked me picture of the 4K as well. Bless him. Yeah, he's a good guy. He's, he was the guy that broke. If you remember where the uh, when he's shaving and he break, he snaps it when he's shaving. Yeah, that's the guy. That's him. Mm. Absolute legend. He's been in quite a few Arnold movies. Um. And there's something else as well, which I'm going to get a stick from, and I won't just mention it now. Some of you may already know, but we'll talk about a bit of hardware later. And for those that <laughs> will have a coffee in their hand, the tongue might roll out and hit the floor, but we'll, we'll, we'll save that for later. Yes, after all of your protestations about uh, what a waste of time. Anyway, that's that. That's enough of that on there. Anyway, Hayden, how about you? How was EGX, first of all? Did you enjoy it? It was fantastic. It was absolutely fantastic. Well, I want to, because um, I wasn't planning on going. No, no, I would have loved to have gone, but work was too hectic for me to, to, to yeah. make it. Well, I was not planning on going at all, and I was just on a chat with uh, Mark, and Mark, uh, Ace Plant Man, he's 
hurt his back and he's laid up and he was planning on going to EGX and um, unfortunately he can't go because he's not well enough. And so he offered me his ticket and uh, I said, oh, thank you very much. Took the day off <coughs> and went down to uh, EGX and had a fantastic time. Mm. So really, you know, thanks very much, Mark. Really appreciate uh, that and I really do hope that your back's uh, better yeah. soon because... I suffer from a bad back and no, it's not a pleasant thing at all. Absolutely. So, yeah, so we uh, met up with Nicky Wilson down there. We went round together. So it was a good, good day. And uh, we ran into the Mature Gamers as well. The Mature Gamer podcast. Yeah, I saw the, twi- I saw the tweets on Twitter there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it was uh, it was a good day. Mm. Really good, good day. Lots to talk about. I'll talk about that in the gaming section. Uh, the other thing is the Podcasting 101 event. Uh, I've had to pull out of that just because my new job, I've been sent on a, a, the, the, the day after the event. Mm. Uh, you have to uh, be at an all-day meeting. So, unfortunately, I've had to contact them and say I couldn't do it. I did say I would like to do it via Skype, if possible, and if my mic's working then... <laughs> But unfortunately, they can uh, facilitate that from their end. But I have said that I'm more than happy to support it in whatever way I can and just promoting it and that. So, uh, But that's the podcast one-on-one event in Edinburgh. Shame, because I was really looking forward to it as mm. well, to be quite honest with you. Yeah. But it's just one of them things, you know, you have to, you know, we, I have to, you know, I have to uh, do what my job requires of me. And uh, unfortunately, that's just taken me away on the most inopportune day. But that's life. Yeah, unfortunately. So, yeah. So. Anything else? Uh, no, don't think so. That's about it, really. Okay. So, if we move swiftly on to gaming this week. No longer a dream, but a reality. Okay, now, news is blank for us at the moment, because we, I've been naughty and not been on the notes. Mm. And you haven't either, but there is one thing kicking around Twitter at the minute, which is a bit unfortunate, and um, with the news of Telltale yes. falling apart. Yes. Now, I'm not sure actually what's happening, because some say there's a few guys still working in the background. There's evidently 25 people working there just to see off the end of The Walking Dead. Mm. And then um, I thought I saw something else saying they weren't, but I'm, not, I'm confused, so I'm not really sure, to be honest. Yeah, to, to be honest, it's one of those um, <coughs> news that, because of everything that's been going on, I've not had time to look into. But I think it's a real shame because they are a good studio. And although I personally have always said they don't make games, what they make is interactive stories. And I've always really enjoyed them as stories. Mm. And I just think it's a real shame if uh, they are closing down and we're not going to get any more. Uh, but to be honest, they hadn't really invested in the development of their systems for well not very much right throughout the whole course of going back to the ps3 where the games were still delivered in a very similar sort of way and things have moved on look at detroit look at you know well heavy rain all those sort of yeah games which are very similar it's so a, it's, yeah it's a shame i would like to have seen for better not for worse and it may be something like microsoft or Sony could have picked them up, maybe you know. Yeah, that would have been good. That would have. And then they could have got those get, get, get those games out, and then maybe with, with the um, with what they you know they whoever buys them could actually help them move forward and improve what they've done in the past. You know, which has been great games. But they needed more investment though in their engine. That's one of the critical things I think for them. Yeah. And the other thing as well, and this is the one thing that really always used to annoy me about them as a company, is their shockingly bad release schedules. You know, some months you would get two or three ep- episodes of the same series, and then you'd be like six months with nothing. Yeah. it need, And I think that that's one of the things that killed it, because people just waited until they were on offer and then bought them. You know, they didn't... I think their model was relying on people buying them piecemeal but because the sh- the release schedule was so bad it never worked mm. but you know that's just personal opinion but there you go yeah yeah just real sad though because again you know you think you, you you've got when you're working for a company like that you think you've got a solid job but yeah well who knew that they were in trouble you know 
it wasn't something that we ever thought of because they were popular on the plus in the you know games with gold and all of that as well, weren't they? So mm. they were always you know up there on sales and stuff like that. So you wouldn't have thought that there were a company that was particularly struggling. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Okay, would you like to go through the new releases for us? Okay, well we're starting the silly season now, so there's quite a few. There's uh, Air Missions Hind on the PS4, Jada Sisters Twisted Dreams Ultimate Edition on the Switch. This is The Police 2 on PS4, Xbox One and Switch. Uh, Valkyra Chronicles 4 on the PS4, Xbox One and Switch. Jagged Alliance Rage on the PC. Life is Strange 2 Digital Version on the PS4, Xbox One and PC. Towerfall Digital on the Switch, Atari Flashbacks uh, Classics Volume 3 on the PS4 and Xbox One, Dakar 18 on the PS4 and Xbox One, Dragon Ball Fighter Z on the Switch, FIFA 19 on everything including the Casio Watch, Fire Pro Wrestling World on the PS4, Flipping Death on the PS4 and Switch, uh, Metal Max Xeno on the PS4, Moonlighter on the PS4 and Switch, Namco Museum Arcade Pack on the Switch and Super Street The Game on the PS4, Switch and PC. And take a deep breath. <laughs> yeah. Anything that interests you at all? Um, Life is Strange 2. Yeah, that's about it for me at the moment. FIFA, FIFA 19. Well, I'll probably play the 10 hours demo of that at some yeah. point. Other than that. Oh yeah, there was something else that just reminded me actually. Mm. Don't know why. But don't worry, I'll leave that, I'll leave that in... Um, when we talk about games, actually, because I suppose it's relevant to that. Okay, fair enough. Uh, the charts. Okay, so five, we have Mario Kart Deluxe from Nintendo. At four, we've got Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy. At three, we've got NBA, NBA 2K19. Uh, Shadow of Tomb Raider is number two. And Marvel, Marvel Spider-Man, of course, is number one. So slightly different now. We're getting a bit of movement in the charts. Yes, well, the AAA games are coming online now, aren't they? So we're going to start seeing these charts go all over the place. And no doubt next week it'll be FIFA at number one. Because <laughs> it always is. And then Call of Duty will be at number one or well, Battlefield. maybe Red Dead might sneak in there a bit later. Maybe. Maybe. So, so yeah. So it's, it's interesting because it Crash Bandicoot, and they're still hanging around. It is cheap, though. It's 30 quid, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, and also Mario Kart as well. That's hanging in there still as well. Mm. From Nintendo. <coughs> Okie doke. So, I don't think we need to do Gold and PSN. That's all well and truly in the mix now. It's time of, time of the month. Well, we'll soon be finding out what next month's Gold and PSN are. No doubt, well, next week we will, because we'll be in Gold next week this time. God, yeah, it's nearly coming into this month. <laughs> yeah, see, almost October. Yeah, looking forward to it. Okay, so we'll, we'll, let's um, go to our gaming this week. I'll start first this time. Um, <clears throat> so I've, I've just been a bit of a naughty boy because I think the bulk of my last two weeks, I've been something else I want to talk about, um, I've been playing Destiny 2. So I've completed the story and I've opened up the Dreaming City for the end game material. And as of this afternoon, I'm about 532. Just fantastic game. I cannot get enough of this game right now. Mm. Let's put it this way, it's like Destiny 1, but a fire team of one. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yes, I know what you mean. Well, I am trying to play other stuff. <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah, you've got you've been playing Spider-Man, rightly so, and um and something else there as well. But I've just I'm just I've been playing with a with a couple of guys um that some of my friends this as well. But I've just been going through some of the, the big bounties. Um, that sort of materialise at Endgame mm. and just really enjoying it um, <clears throat> the blinding well in the Dreaming City is really cool, brings back the memories of, of, of Destiny of old, um, that's really good I won't say too much, if people haven't got there yet I don't want to talk about it too much but it, it, it's a little tiny grind to get there but it's well worth it I'm doing that grind at the moment to be quite honest with you because I'm doing the uh, I've just done the thing of uh, doing Taken. So I did the same strike twice just to clear that up. Right. So next off, I can't remember what I've got to do next, but I think there's only about five stages into it. It's not to too many. A lot of the Dreaming City, isn't there? Because mm. you have to kill three 
um like you know ones where you, they're in the they're in the what do you call them the you have to remind me now <laughs> uh, you know the hidden areas what the uh yeah okay i'm with you yeah the, you know the the guys who have the large yellow bars with the shields <coughs> yeah normally um and you have to go down into the caves forgot what they call the the, the the unexplored areas or whatever it is that they, they call them on destiny <laughs> you have to go down there and there's three of those you have to find and then you have to kill taken either in the edz uh, or on a strike or in gambit mm. and then you've got to do a couple of other quests so i'm i've just literally finished doing the strike stuff yeah, the best best way to do the best way to get the um, well, if you got if you got to do the blight in that at some point, mm. is to go down into those unexplored areas. There's a couple of them on the EDZ which is just full of them. Yeah, and you can get that done in a cut. You can do that in a couple of runs. Well, it tells you where to go, doesn't it? Because it says you have to go into either the sludge or you have to do the strike. Yeah, it tells you where you have to earn that power. Mm. So I don't know if you, it it allow you to earn it in other areas, but I went to the sludge and there was nothing net. There was all cabal there. There wasn't the taken. No, you want to go and do the um the, the locations. Mm. Just go to the hidden locations, and you there. I think the best place is I think it's on Nessus. So right the one the one where the dudes where the dude is that you interact with to do your bounties mm. is one just behind him. If you go and do that one. You can do two. Do it twice, and you'll do do the uh, that part easy. Well, I, I just did the strike yeah. twice, and that sorted me out straight away. Because now you can choose which strike you want to do as well. Oh yeah, but it's funny enough. I did I did all those before I had to get to do that again at one point. So I had to yeah. go around. I had to go around in another, in another quest. Right. But no, I mean it's really weird because I'm getting like my blues now drop at about five eleven to five twenty five. Yeah. But I'm running out of stuff for infusing because it is not cheap to infuse anymore. No. So I'm having to hold back on that at the minute. But uh, but it's not cheap to infuse any, at any point, though, is it? Not now because you, it... you need like four items to do it. Yeah. But uh, but that's all right. I mean, at the moment, I'm I'm quite happy because I'm I've, I've got me rank up. I actually went on Gambit this afternoon, right, for the first time, and I'd love to do that with the team because that is so much fun. Really like that, mm. but unfortunately, um, with the Cade's with the Cade's will that I've got to do, which is for his exotic gun. Yeah, the first part of that is you've got to you got to kill invaders in in Gambit, mm-hmm. which isn't easy. Let's put it that way. Right. So I'm going to invest a bit more time into that. I think, but yeah, the other obviously the other thing is Iron Banners this week as well. And yep. more importantly, power matters. So you've got to be kitted out with your most powerful armor and weaponry because it will make a difference. I completed my 30th game this afternoon to get that, mm-hmm. to do the, the bound, you know, the, the milestones. Right. And I got all the armor. I've got one of each of the guns as well, the weapons as well. So I'm pretty cool that I've got those. So I can hopefully I've got some. I've got a couple of good rolls because rampage is one of the best things to have at the minute. Mm. So at some point I just need to infuse them up a bit on the on the uh, on their levels. But you know it's just it's really good. I'm really enjoying it. You see, crucible. The only mode I really likes mayhem. Yeah. Where you're using your powers more, but. You know, the Iron Banner gear and, you know, the the, the, the armour looks sweet. You know, it, it doesn't take much to do. I know, I just can't be bothered with it, though. I've never been that bothered about the Crucible stuff. Mm. Oh, well. Some do, some don't. Mm. Um, something else. I ordered... I ordered a new PlayStation Classic. Why? <laughs> I don't know. I think because my only avenue of... A PlayStation is on the PlayStation 4. Right. And I did have a PlayStation 1 back in the day. Okay. So because there's no backwards compatibility with Sony, I thought, well, I might pick one of them up. So I pre-ordered it. Then we'll wait and see if I still want it come December the 3rd. Isn't it about £90 or something? 89 yeah. Wow. Uh, 
five games. You do know that you do know that you could pick up a PS One for much cheaper. Yeah, but again, getting twenty games would be a bit difficult, especially if it's the big ones. I, I doubt it. Well, eBay. Yeah, but you know, even I think trying to pick up Resident Evil Two and stuff like that won't be heat. They'd be they'd be like rare as rocking horse mm. manure. You see. So let's wait and see what they announce when they announce the uh, the twenty games in total. Yeah, we'll see whether it's worth it or not. See, I've still got my original PS One. Mm. I had one with a had... with a little screen. Oh, well, I had, my mine was before then. I think I had, mine was about oh one of the one of the old um, motor racing games with uh, what's his name doing the commentary back in the day. Formula One. Mm. Mm. That's what I've got. That's that. what come with a bundle on one of them. Ray Murray. With Murray Walker. Yeah. Murray Walk, that was it. But I mean, we'll see. I mean, I'd, I'd love to. I mean, as much as they'd be pixelated as hell, <laughs> having a go. You know, if they, if they got something like Metal Gear Solid on there, Grand, the original Gran Turismo, maybe one of the early Tomb Raiders. Mm. Uh, you know, we'll see. I mean, it, you know, I mean, they do sell well. I mean, the look at the other ones that have been going out. I know some people buy them and just leave the gather dust. Yeah. But it's something I could put in this room, to be honest. Just something for gaming in this room. So, sort of put the retro in this bit, and then the, the good stuff's next door. <laughs> but how much will you actually play it? Who knows? Who knows? Mm. But the Nintendo never really grasped me, obviously. And but this does. And I think. Do you know what? If I was a betting man, are we going to see an X an Xbox original with twenty games? Now I know we got back compat. So really, you can play all the games because they've done a fantastic job with that. But do you think they might still try and release one? I can't see why not. It's a money-making scheme, isn't it, really? Of course it is. And of course you, it is. The latest one on the bandwagon is Sony. So would you, yeah. would, would, you, would you go for it or not? Nope, because I've already still got my original Xbox. Well, I've got that with no controller and no... No, no leads or, or, or original. We just have the little mini one. Might be quite cute, as they say. <laughs> mm. I have to admit, these these retro consoles, I'm really, I'm not sold on them. I mean, if it's a lot of people that have got the original consoles and they're working well, then yeah, good for them, really. Yeah. Same with the Sega ones and everything else, you know? Yeah. But yeah, you know, I like the idea of it. Anyway, should we go into some rib... I said you're ribbing, this doesn't sound right, does it? Do, do you want to rip me apart now? <laughs> I would love to, but I'm not, I'm, um, you know, so after all of the criticism on, and observations that you've made about me having a PSVR. But this goes, back, this goes back to an old podcast as well, doesn't it, really? It does. It does. But after all of your protestations, <coughs> what have you bought? I bought the PSVR version too. <laughs> oh, dear. dear why, me. Why, why did I do this? <laughs> yes, why did you do this after you slagged it off for ages? God only know. Do you know what I would just Was it an impulse buy? No, because I've been I've been umming and ahhing about it for about a month now. You never said a thing to me. I know I kept it quiet. <laughs> but you know I because I, I I got I got a second end version of from CEX with my um with that money I had left over as well, so it didn't cost me as much. Mm-hmm. Um but it's basically brand new. Version two's not been out that long, is it? No, I don't think so. No. Um so I have got a game called Impatient, which is one of the you know um, who, who made it now. <clears throat> the guys that did Until Dawn, right? So I haven't put that. In. I, I've actually put it in and just had a look look at it. But do you, do you know where I've had the most fun? Now, obviously, I tried the kitchen demo, which I should have probably tried to try when I went to EGX, probably two or three EGXs back. Yeah. But there's something on the PlayStation for free called the the VR Playroom. Yes. And in there, you've got these these sort of, uh, how do I put it, sort of Mario-esque come, just the platform games of old. Yeah. Running, collecting coins, whacking stuff and all that. And I loved it. I loved every minute of it. Because... I don't know what it was with that, but just walking through that world as you're going straight on in your head, but you, you turn left and right to bounce everywhere. It, it just felt really immersive. I don't know why. 
Uh, just thoroughly enjoyed it, to be honest. Oh, that's good. You know, and and you get you get trophies for it as well. Not that they mean a lot anyway, but I was really, really impressed with it. It reminded me when I went when I was at EGX that year when I tried that um, the Fox, you know, the one that's gone to Xbox now. Yeah, um, that I sort of played that on the Oculus, <clears throat> and same sort of thing. But I didn't have that sickness I had before. Um, I think it came back worked pretty well for me, and then I went on to Gran Turismo. Okay. And took a toy around around one of the tracks. Uh, that was pretty cool. I tell you, breaking breaking hard and losing it a bit that does make you feel a bit queasy for a bit. <laughs> but now that, that worked really well as well. I really enjoyed that. Um, <clears throat> there's a couple of other bits and pieces I tried as well. I was going to try the Spider Man, but I, I couldn't be bothered for that. I didn't think there was going to be much cop to be honest. I th- uh, you need the um, move controllers for that, but you've got those, haven't you? I've got I've got two of those as well. Yeah, yeah. Which I've only just charged up. I've not actually used them yet. And what I'd like to do at some point, if payday is good to me, is to pick up Star Trek. I've still not played that. Because can you play a single player now? Is that right? Uh, there is a single player campaign in there, yeah. Mm, but do I go haul out and get the next gen version with it as well? Only you can answer that, but I've just got the original. Right. I think you can buy it separately, or you can buy it as a pack. Yeah, it's a DLC. Mm. It's a DLC. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I don't know what. I don't know what prompted me to do this. I just, I was so tempted just to give it a go. And as I say, I've been sitting on my brain for the last month, stewing over this. Mm. So there you go. Something else people can have a go at me back, can't they? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I had a, you know, after you'd said it, I thought, after everything that you've said. <laughs> did you, did you, did you notice, did you see any achievements pop up or on any windows to know that I was playing it? No. Okay, so that's been in Because some people um, text me back saying, oh, you got, you, where's these trophies come from? How are you playing this? <laughs> mm. And obviously, I did put that picture out as well. So, uh... <clears throat> yeah, no, I haven't seen. Uh, to be honest, I don't see anything that anybody does very much. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, it's not like the Xbox where you know you have your activity feed and you can see what people have done because it, it seems to be much more isolated on PlayStation. I find unless I'm just not looking in the right area. I know you can see what people are playing at the moment yeah. and. You know, you can look at other people's trophies if they share it, but it's not something that I've, I've really looked at on there. So now I'm interested in hearing that, for example, everybody's golf is going to be go- some of that's going to be going into VR at some point. So I've been told. Yes. Yeah. Uh, have you got Star Wars Battlefront? <clears throat> no, I haven't. You can pick that up really cheap, and there's an X-wing um, section in that for VR. Hmm. Because I'm lo- what I have been looking forward to forgetting the VR for a minute, and if, this might, if it, I don't know if the full game would be like that. But Ace Combat next year. I've seen that. You can, you can tell me about that in a minute. Um, <laughs> I've watched a lot of videos on that. I really like the idea of that. I really do. Yeah. Um, I would like to try Resident Evil Seven. I know I've completed the game once on the Xbox. But what I might do is, you can pick it up pretty cheap now. I'd like to just play it on the easiest mode, just to enjoy the experience more than trying to beat the characters at its toughest point, if you know what I mean. Yeah, you could get the gold version, couldn't you? Mm. With all the DLC. I mean, I've seen a copy for about 20 quid. But if I leave it a bit, it will um, be even be cheaper. Well, that, that could be like um, a wintertime game for you. Yeah, yeah. You know, after the crazy season. But I'd like to... I do like my horror. So, um, yeah, just to see what's out there. Anyone got, anyone got any suggestions on that? Just let me know. Because um, mm. it's something to look at in not too distant future. Anyway, enough about that. Just come on. So, how was EGX? And, not, and you can you can bring in Ace Combat when you want as well. Because I really want to hear about that. <clears throat> okay. Well, um, the show was massive. 
and really quite busy, especially considering it was a Friday as well. Yeah. Um, it's bigger than the one that we went to three years ago. Oh, was it really? Yeah, it really made, definitely. I mean, to be honest, another reason why I didn't want to make an effort, because I thought, well, there's not going to be a lot there I'm thinking I want to, want to play. Mm. Obviously, did you get to see Fallout at all? No. Because they were there, I think. I did see... Uh, the front of their um, their area where there were some guys yeah. doing some photos and that. Oh, Bethesda were there and, uh, yeah, there was people getting hats and masks and stuff like that Such as well. The same mask I got. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the Bethesda star. I did see that and I, I fell over. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, I sent you the picture, Yeah, that didn't onesie I? looks amazing. I don't I, you know, <laughs> I could do... Do you know what? It's starting to get cold now in this house. I haven't turned the heating on yet, and I've got a hoodie on today to keep me warm, but I could do with a onesie. Oh, no, that was not That was the Destiny one. Was it Destiny? I oh, think even better. Yeah. <laughs> I'll have to look in their store, see if they got one. <laughs> yeah, because uh, Nicky turned around to me, he said, he said uh, about you getting one, I said, I'm not, he said, he'll be doing a podcast with you, and he said, I will. I said, we'll not be doing a podcast while he's sat in a onesie. <laughs> Oh, dear. yeah. Anyway. So, 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 yeah, big names that were there. Mm-hmm. So, Spider-Man, Division 2, Assassin's Creed, Odyssey, Strange Brigade, Final Fantasy XV, the PC version, uh, Kingdom Hearts, Ultimate Pokemon, Let's Go, Soul Calibur 6, the new Metroid game, and a uh, load more, including games like uh, Ace Combat. Like I said, there, there, there was a lot of games, but there didn't seem to be like, you know, some years when you go and it's just sort of like triple A game in every direction that you look. Yeah, because I think... And it wasn't like that the year, this time. The year we went was just before Star Wars Battlefront was coming out. Yeah, it was. And it, well, we we play, we queued for an hour, didn't mm, we? Exactly. Uh, with it, because uh, we, we we chose not to use our press pass to get straight in. <laughs> and, we, and we queued with all of the all the listeners. Yeah, so. all the plebs. <laughs> no, all of the listeners, not plebs. <laughs> I don't mean that. But yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So um, you know, because well, we didn't think it was right. Really, just leaving people behind like that. So yeah, that was. Uh, that, I mean that that one I think was probably an exceptional one because it was like literally left, right, and centre. It was you know triple A, but this time it was a little bit more sedate in terms of that. There was a massive Nintendo area uh, that was there. Can't really say I did much investigating on that because I'm I'm just not into Nintendo. Uh, loads of PC stuff. <clears throat> I might have just picked myself up a new little piece of hardware which. I'm actually starting to think that the Corsair stuff might be what some of the problems I'm getting at the moment. Well, we'll find out in a minute so, when you go dead on me again, when you have to reboot the PC. Yeah, no doubt. <coughs> um, because for the last few weeks, I've been having the graphics card switching itself off when there's nothing the matter with it. And it, it doesn't do it during games. It's already done it while, you know, we've been sat talking or whatever. Mm. And since uh, I've plugged in my new Corsair mouse, which I'm very pleased with, suddenly, you know, I've had a problem with my microphone. So it just, I don't know what, what it is. Yeah, odd, isn't it? Very odd. Very odd indeed. But such is life. Um, yeah, so the queues were ridiculous. I mean, there was people actually queuing for an hour and a half, two hours to play Spider-Man. It's out, people. Why are you playing queuing that long for a game that you could have literally have walked to the um across the sort of like central aisle to the Argos stall and bought mm. it because Argos were there? I thought that was a bit random. Argos, Argos, yeah, Argos. Were they was selling there. them cheaper than most? Because normally it's game that's there, isn't it? Or were they there? Yeah, in- game wasn't there. It was Argos that were there. Oh, okay. But, um, yeah, so you could literally have just walked four metres mm. from Sony and gone to Argos and bought the game. So why people were doing it, I don't know. Um, you know, I would have thought that it would have had a smaller presence, uh, so, you know, 
Spider-Man <clears throat> because mm. of the fact that it was already released, but no, it was like a really big thing there. Um, Assassin's Creed had massive queues. Destiny 2, Forsaken had queues as well. You could either do a strike, you could play Gambit. That's right, yeah. I saw that on Twitter. Bungie were tweeting about it. Yeah. And uh, Nikki and I got our pictures taken with Kate. I saw, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And I, and I will say that in terms of uh, that, you know, I have, do have a 28-inch waist and Nikki's um, gone and photoshopped me to make me look really fat. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hand out any cards by any chance as well? Uh, I, I, it, was a bit, it was a bit difficult to do, to be quite honest. I mean, most of the time, I think me and Nikki were just chatting mm. <laughs> and wandering about and looking at stuff and I was trying to find gr- a graphics card that was <laughs> a reasonable choice. Tra- Press, but no one had any. So, un- unlike Insomnia, where they were selling them by the bucket load. Well, it was a PC, more inv- more of a PC thing there, wasn't it? So, Yeah. Um, we watched a presentation um, on Just Cause. Yeah. The new Just Cause 4 game. I have to admit, that really does look uh, quite impressive. That That game is your thing, isn't it? To be honest, it is my thing. Yeah, I love the game. Um, definitely love the game. Uh, but it's it just looks so much fun. It's like they've turned up the mayhem uh, in the game even more so from the last one. Mm. So this one's, I think, taking or borrowing a little bit from Metal Gear Solid: The Phantom Pain. You know, you had those. Uh, balloons that you could attach to things to, you know, send them up into the sky. Where you can oh, a- yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah. yeah, well, you can do that with this one. Yeah. Um, as well. But what is really quite uh, good on this is if you put several balloons on, say, a tank, you can make it into a flying tank. <laughs> and you can fly about and shoot stuff with it. This sounds like the cheat mode in Grand Theft Auto, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, a, a little bit, but it it was just absolutely insane. Some mm. of the stuff that you could do, um, and it looks absolutely beautiful as well. The environments and that's really well rendered. I had to go on pub uh, pub G uh, uh, this weekend at home. Yeah, you know, on the Xbox. God, the graphics on that look awful. They're really, considering that's now a full release, hmm. and I'm doing it on the Xbox One X, I thought it looked bad. And, it, you know, it's like, I, there was a, it looked actually worse than the last time I'd played, yeah. which is, was a bit weird. And it certainly, you know, Fortnite looks a lot better game, even though I don't like Fortnite. But well, It's that cartoon graphics though, isn't it? Yeah, it is. But um, they, they're going for more realism, but it just doesn't look realistic on uh, PUBG. Whereas you look at just cars and the environments look really lovely, really lovely. Yeah. So um, anyway, Nikki was absolutely in raptures because Simon Miller was doing the presentation. <coughs> oh, I saw his picture with him. Yeah, he was he was oogling, wasn't he? His, his oh man. yes. Oh yeah. His, his, his actually... man thing. Yes, I, th- I think he's got a man crush on there because he turned around and he said, I'm going to cuddle him after this. <laughs> yes, you did say that, Nicky, and yeah, I am embarrassing you. <laughs> uh, and he, you know, he did get a hug off him as well. That was the ironic thing. But at the end of the presentation, he gave us each a hat. Yeah. You know, a baseball cap. And it's like a decent quality one. It's not like a piece of cardboard. Mm. But um, Nicky was like, oh, in raptures because he caught Sean. Uh, Simon Miller's one, when he took, you know, because he'd run out of ones just as he got to us, and then he chucked it up in the air, and it, uh, he managed to get it. And so <laughs> I, I think at that point he was wanting to cryogenically freeze it and, you know, clone clone him. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so that was all uh, a little bit of a laugh uh, as well. What else did we do? There was tabletop game in there. Um, with and meet and greets as well. Loads and loads of merchandise. I did buy a load of rubbish. Yeah. <laughs> to be honest, I got a Deadpool, uh, controller holder, which is like really, really cool, I think. Mm. So I was quite pleased with that. Um, 
but I also got some other stuff, like, for example, some coasters that had the, uh, in the shape of you know, like small versions of the old PS1 cases with all of the cover art on so that they look like one of the boxes, but they're just the coaster. Yeah, yeah. So that was quite cool. So, the games you play, did you get to play many games at all? or um, I had a go on a few. Um, mm. I played one which was a cross between Diablo, Civ and Hearthstone. Yeah. And it just, it, it didn't work for me, yeah. to be honest. But um, I'm sure that someone will probably like it out there. But you did your battles, mm. um, you know, Hearthstone style, by placing cards and stuff like that. And you also uh, moved about in the in the area, and it looked like Civ. You know, so you had, it was turn-based, and you did so many moves yourself, and then the enemy did a move, and then you did a move like that. Yeah. It was all right, but I I don't think it's ever going to be like a really big uh, mainstream sort of game, to be no, honest. No. The, uh, what about so? What about Ace Combat Seven? Did you see that running? We saw, yeah, we were stood in the area where it was running, and we could have had a go on it, but chose not to, to be honest. But they had the flight sticks, hmm. you know, the uh, Thrustmaster ones that are available for the PlayStation. Yeah, people were playing it on that and on normal controllers. Looked absolutely gorgeous when I was uh, looking at the game. You know the the environment, the world that it was rendered in, the way that the plane looked, the movement of it, everything was absolutely superb. I'm really looking. That's a game that I wasn't bothered about to have gone to really looking forward to. Mm. Yeah, I've seen the trailers for it. It looks amazing, and I played that back in the day on the PlayStation. I've got it on a PC. I've not actually cranked it up to be honest mm. um nikki had gone the dark pictures man of uh, uh maiden okay and that's another one from the developers i think who did detroit oh all right okay. so it's like so. the latest one in their mm. one it's sort of like more of a horror a bit like until dawn by the look oh, of that, it that piqued my interest then yeah, I was thinking when he was playing it, I was thinking I know exactly who will be playing this at some point. And I thought of you. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I had to go over a game with a little developer uh, called Planet Alpha. Okay. Which is um, it's from Team 17, and it's a platform horizontal scrolling uh, thing. But the art style is very much sort of 1950s, that, you know, Nuka Cola from Fallout sort of design. Yeah. You know, in terms of the spacesuit, but also like that 1950s, early to mid 60s sort of Star Trek y kind of, you know, wacky environments with blue plants and, you know, uh, blue, plants with blue leaves and things like that mm. on it. And it looks absolutely gorgeous. It plays really well as well. Really, and, and um, well, I, I came back and I bought it. <laughs> so I will be reviewing that next week. Okay, cool. But I've uh, really enjoyed that so far. Hmm. Uh, what else was there? <clears throat> oh, yeah, just as we were going as well, we ran into the Mature Gamers crew and had a short chat with them. Did you notice your T-shirt? Is that what gave it away? Uh, no, Nikki actually uh, said, oh, there's, you know, there so, they so. are. And, yeah. uh we went over, mm. so I had a, a chat with them uh, as well, and, um, you know, Anna was uh, asking about, well, inside, she said, she was like, wondering, you know, why you changed, and talked about, you know, just oh, okay. to start out on our own, <clears throat> yeah. and then outside, she looked at my t-shirt, and she said, oh, pop culture gamers, <laughs> are they here? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then the, she just realised that you know it, who I was. <laughs> oh really? Oh dear. <laughs> so that that was that was an amusing moment. So and uh, she said she's going to listen to the show. So hello, <laughs> nice <laughs> yeah. to meet you all. Now, this, is, this is me. 
<laughs> yeah, this this is me. This that was me. You were talking to honestly. Mm. So uh, yeah, so that was uh, the end of that. And then uh, Nikki <clears throat> went off with them and had a, a bit of a thing. But I was um, I was wanting to get home because you know it's a three hour drive. Yeah. And then of course the M1 was all shut by three lanes, so there was only one, and it, all of the idiots who drove right down to the very end to cut in in front of everybody, holding everyone else up instead of just knitting in yeah. all together, you know. Mm. So, yeah, so that was uh, that day, so it was uh, a really good good day. Oh, we'll try it, oh, we'll make an effort next year. Yeah, Let, let's have a proper... Uh, pop culture game. It'd be nice to, uh, if it if it's big enough, I don't mind doing two days, but you know, we'll we'll see. Yeah. Okay, so t- I really want to know about Tomb Raider because even though you've not played the one in the middle, <laughs> you've started on this. I one. have played the one in the middle. I just didn't really get finish it. it. You didn't finish it, did you? I well, to be honest, I just found it a slog. Well, this is identical, apparently, from what I'm hearing. So. Prove me otherwise. <laughs> I, I, actually, I don't think it is identical at all. As in, um, in as in, in the t- way the gameplay works and all that, is it? Um, just in terms of the way that it's paced, mm. to be honest. I've got one question I want to ask you before you start, though, because... Go on, then. <clears throat> when this was first advertised, yeah. and you're seeing, some, you're seeing some screenshots, you're seeing some video footage, Yeah. to me, the colour palette didn't look as good as what it should do for me now i know we're going to get when you're watching video on you know it's never gonna be identical to putting a disc in but mm. it just didn't look right and is it is it me or it does look really good it, it you know, does in, look in really good yeah. it does look really good definitely mm. absolutely definitely so obviously it's said in the re- reboot of the series and graphically you know these are some of the best looking games of uh, certainly of that genre of game yeah that are out there to be quite honest with you the there are different options for playing this game as well you can either play it on the fps 60 frames a second 4k Hmm. mode um or you can play it on the quality mode so that you know where it's the improved graphics Personally, I've just gone for the 60 frames a second. I've heard it's best to go for the pretty graphics because it's not that sort of game where you really need it. I just wanted to see what it was what it was like, to be quite honest, but mm. it runs so well, you know, on the, the fast pace. I mean, obviously, sometimes it dips below the 4K number, you know, if there's an awful lot going on, but most of the time, I think it's pretty much there. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it just handles really so well. The controls for Lara are very slick. Mm. Uh, as you would expect, you know, there is the usual sort of weapons that you come across. I mean, when you start the story, um, this is, well, if you haven't played it, I suppose it's a bit of a spoiler, but considering it happens in the first two minutes of the game, I don't really think it's a spoiler. Basically, Lara crashes in a plane and has no weapons, and then she has to find the weapons and all of that sort of stuff as well. Mm. So there's, you know, there's a, a definite learning curve, which sometimes I think feels occasionally a bit slow when it's telling you, you know, or double press A to jump higher when running up a wall. Yeah. You know, that sort of stuff. It tells you a couple of times, you think, actually, I've got it. I've done it once. You know, well, it, it should it's, be, a, it's a what popular you, sort what of What it thing. should you, do, the way that FIFA works, it says, oh, hi, you're back again. We know how you know. We know how you like to play FIFA. Would you like to carry on playing on XYZ? Yeah. The same that if it recognised a game save from Tomb Raider or knows you've played Tomb Raider past then, Ah, do you want any help? But we know you know how to play this game. We'll let you play it that way, you know? So mm. skip that little learning curve for you. Yes. Mm. Yeah, it would be good. But I don't remember that option being there. I might have fallen asleep at that particular moment. But yeah, uh, yeah it was definitely there. Um, I'll say it was, I, I definitely didn't see it. So, but 
it plays fine. You know, the, there's absolutely nothing back with it. That goes relatively quickly. Yeah. The I think it's going to be the usual sort of weapons, as in all of the the normal Lara Croft games. You certainly you start off with your bow, which you have to update as well. You know, there's all the normal sort of collecting stuff. Yeah, it's a little bit more intricate now because you collect different pieces of stuff rather than just scrap, which you need so much scrap to do it. You have to more collect a bit more focused stuff. But all of that, it's all sort of like, you know, randomised to the okay. most part of it as well. But pretty easy to do. Um, upgrading, again, you know, like I said, it's <coughs> very easy to be able mm. to do. There is an RPG element to your character as well, just like in the previous ones. So, um, you know, upgrading the skill points to how you want to play the character, which is fine. Lara's survivor instincts are back. Is this a bit more darker, this game? Uh, she's a tougher character mm. from than what I remember her being in the previous games. Yeah. But, you know, you can press on the survival instincts and then it'll just highlight things that you need to know about in, you know, yellow or whatever. Mm. Like I said, I felt the last one was a real slog, but this one feels much better paced from what I've played of it so far. The challenge team's quite nicely designed, with, I think, probably just the right level of difficulty to allow you to quickly get through them, but not too quickly, Mm -hmm. as it were. And, yeah, so the other thing as well is you also get flashback bit in this where you can actually uh, play Lara as a child that one I have to admit that that bit she's pretending to be an adventurer Is that, and, did we have that in the Uncharted when the Uncharted games I remember yes we did hmm. but to be honest I don't know I just felt there was something a little bit more creepy playing a little girl than a little boy I don't, well, I don't know did, did, then again is. we've done it before because we played you know some of the characters in some of the games you've played over the last few years of I mean, what about playing Life is Strange? I mean, she's what, fifteen, sixteen? Yeah, but that this character you know, Lara was even younger than that on this one. As young as it in just, um, well, I haven't really played the other game yet on the PlayStation. Uncharted. No, I'm mean on about the um one of the games where the, the, she, she's a little girl. Well, actually we did I think in the Uncharted oh, I was a little boy, wasn't it? Or was a little girl at the beginning? It was a little boy. Yeah. Because it was Nathan Drake as a child. Mm. But yeah, I'd be right. Mm. But no, so far I've really enjoyed it. But because obviously I've been playing uh, Spider Man, mm. you know, I haven't invested all of the time in that. But that's just because I want to finish Spider Man. I want to put that to bed. Well, sometimes, you, two, as I say, you can play, try and play two AAA games at the same time. It don't work very well. No, and that's why I've decided to concentrate on Spider-Man for the time being. Yeah. Because we've got a few weeks before there's another really big AAA being released. Okay, I'll take you word for it, because right now I can't even think what the next one is. <laughs> that's what I said, we've got a few weeks. Yeah. We Call of Duty and stuff like that. Well, we, FIFA, but I don't play FIFA, so that doesn't really affect us. Mm. Okay. So, yeah, definitely worth a look. Definitely worth a look. Really enjoying it so far. Mm. Cool. So the next one is Moose Man. The moose and the loose. Yep. There's a moose loose about this hoose. Yeah, so the Moose Man, it's an indie 2D platformer from uh, Morteshka, uh, which is in the tradition of like Limbo and Hugh and those sorts of games. Yeah. So the game basically uh, takes inspiration from Finno-Ugric law and Chud tribes of Northern Europe. Know them well. Yes. (laughs) Because it rolls off your tongue as well, doesn't it? Yeah, it does, doesn't it? But basically, you're a shaman who is able to perceive and move between uh, an ethereal plane 
where creatures live and you encounter animals and spirits yeah. that will either try and help or hinder you along the way. Mm-hmm. Graphically, the style's quite basic and it's mildly reminiscent of sort of cave painting sort of illustrations. Yeah. As it were. And I think that's the deliberate choice in art style as well. Um, and you basically, you solve a variety of different puzzles by flipping between realms. So, for example, there might be something that will be blocking your path. Mm. And then you flip to the other realm and what's blocking your path suddenly becomes something that you can walk over right. or you can move out of the way or something like that and then you flip back. That sounds a bit like Destiny <laughs> at the moment because you've got two realms in Destiny and so one minute you're in a, a nice area, the next minute you've got rocks flying everywhere at you, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, so the puzzles are normally hidden in plain view. So if you look at the screen, it normally tells you what the answer to the puzzle is, yeah. but in a very cryptic sort of way. So, for example, in order to get one of the collectibles at a specific point, you've got to stop and then, like, look left, right, right, left, left, right, right, right. Hmm. And you would, you otherwise, if you di- didn't think about it, you would run straight past that area and not do anything. But because there's these symbols there, and if you try it in the right place, then this uh, collectible will come down from the sky. Mm-hmm. And then you just pick it up. So th- there's all of that sort of mechanic that's in there. So, you know, if you know what to look for, you can, you know, they're easy, basically missable achievements, is what I'm saying. Yeah. Because a lot of your um, achievements are actually based on you collecting certain artifacts. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I would say overall, the game, if you're willing to invest the three to five hours for it to work, cause it's not a massively long game. Uh, it's it's okay. It's it's not. It's not the best in its its uh, uh, genre, you know, where you've got a lot of stiff competition from games like uh, Hugh and Limbo mm. and Inside, particularly, which are all much better examples. Uh, but if you like that sort of game, it's another one that you can actually have a look on. Um, it's enjoyable, like I said, but it ultimately it's just it just doesn't live up to those other ones. But that is stiff competition to go against. Yeah. So, yeah. Nice. Are we done that's, there, then? Yep, yeah, that's my gaming for the week. Cool. So, I must get a bit more... Peer, I'll try some PSVR over the next few days for next week. See what I can find to have a play with. <clears throat> well, why don't you try Until Dawn? Because that came with Plus. Until Dawn? The uh, VR version of it. I forgot what it was called. It was Until Dawn something. Oh, I don't know. Would have I had that anyway? Because I've got Until Dawn anyway. So would there be our part to that separate? Or No, it was a separate game. There was one that was on Rails. But I don't, yes. I don't know if that's I, the one I was li- on about. I don't, I don't know if I accepted it back in the day. Oh, that's always a mistake to do, isn't it? Yeah, it is. But anyway, that's by the way. We'll, we'll see. Anyway. Uh, Rush of Blood, it was yeah, called. Yeah, it was, it was like on Rails, sort of spooky train... Sort of thing, wasn't it? Something like that. Something like that. Yeah. Anyway, let's move on to movies, TV, and streaming. In quest of a better life. Can't think of any news that's worth our attention at the moment. Um, other than uh, one of Chaz and Dave has died. Yeah. Well. That 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 did um, make me feel a bit crappy, to be honest. Mm. Um, more so from from the football side of things because they're they're great Spurs fans, and they did all our FA Cup songs back in the day, which they produced and sang with as well. And I've seen them on I've seen them on stage, or should I say, I've seen them on the terraces. <clears throat> they actually set up a, a, an area for them to play at one of the games. Yeah, they were doing loads of songs and stuff, and that was pretty cool. And, yeah, uh, it was Chaz Hodges who died, wasn't he? He was 74. Yeah, I think it was some um, cancer-related, I think. What I was led to believe. But yeah, real shame. 
Well, they were. I mean, they were big stars in the eighties, weren't they? Well, yeah. I mean, other than what they did for Spurs, I mean, they had, they did a load of they had Rabbit Rabbit and all sorts, didn't they? He mm. sort of, I, I, whether you want to call them novelty records, I don't really know to be honest. But but yeah, yeah, that's a real shame. And of course, the other news about Henry Cavill is no longer going to be Superman, is he? That really, that wound me up. Because <laughs> you're just getting used to him in the Justice League and everything else and Superman, and they go and spoil it. <laughs> well, I think they're, well, they're going to be replacing um, Affleck as well, aren't they? So well, I, think that I have a feeling that the DC Universe is really in a lot of trouble. Well, they could sort of restock, reskin it a bit, can't they, I suppose, theoretically. Well, unless, of course, they're going to stick his face on somebody else's yeah. body. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, I, I just... It's a shame because I would love to see a really good, like, Batman and Superman movie yeah. come out. That, you know, they were great characters, mm. great comic books, you know, very fond of them from being a child, but it's just not happening. Yeah. Actually, just going back onto a bit of um, someone that died this week. Do you remember? Mm-hmm. Do you remember the? Um, there was a show with um, Ian McShane where he was like an antiques dealer. Do you remember that back in the eighties? Love Joy. Yeah. Do you remember Tinker, the guy with the beer, the berry? Yes, he, yes, he, he died as well, he did. didn't he? Yeah, yeah. And I actually met him. How <laughs> oh, would you meet him? In a bookstore. Well, I was working in a bookstore and he was in there. All right. Yeah, okay. just totally out of the blue. I was, we were doing the work on the lighting for a penguin bookshop. This is what I said. We're going back in the 80s now when I was doing this. And uh, yeah, bumped into him there and had a chat with him. Really nice old boy. But yeah, anyway. Cinema releases. Oh, actually, no, I'm just thinking there is something else, isn't there, about Star Trek? Oh, go, go on then. Uh, Discovery, uh, particularly. I'm oh, just trying to see if I can find it. So, what they got the new they... animated shorts that are uh, not, not animated, but the new shorts that are coming out. There's, I think, four of them, is that right? And they're yeah, going to be, that's they right. start at the beginning of October. Yes. So, one's going to be on Tilly, for example, I think. And, uh, it's one a month, isn't it? Yeah. Until January. So, yeah, that's a nice little taster. Yeah, definitely. So I think that'll be a, a good uh, a good thing to get us back in the mood. Not that we're ever out of the mood for a uh, new Star Trek, but uh, that's another thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, that's pretty cool. Okay, should we um, do cinema releases? Yep. Are you going to do those? Yep, can do. I think outstanding here, we've got The Wife, we've got Black 47, Night School, and Skate Kitchen. Let's face it, there's not going to be a lot of blokes that's going to go and actually want to watch a movie about The Wife. <laughs> they're, they're, that's a drama, apparently, anyway. So uh, Yeah, yeah. Well, it'd have to be, wouldn't it? Wives always have a drama. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, let's skip to the skip to the the um, let's skip to the the, the Blu Ray DVDs because there's some there's some great ones in there which you want to talk about. Oh, definitely, definitely, because we've got DC Legends of Tomorrow seasons one and three on Blu Ray or DVD. Mm-hmm. Doctor Who: Twice Upon a Time. I'm not sure which episode that one is, but that's in 4K Blu Ray. Halloween: The 40th Anniversary Edition. That's coming on the first. I've already ordered it. <laughs> What a surprise. Yeah. Jack Ryan, the five film collection. Yeah. We've got the one I'm uh, waiting for tomorrow, Solo, A Star oh, Wars Story. Excuse me, I'll just wake up snooze. <laughs> Sorry, I did, really didn't like it that much. You have no taste in movies. No, I did see it at the cinema, though, so give me that. <laughs> <laughs> Stan Lee's Lucky Man Season 3, only on DVD, surprisingly enough. Mm. Swamp Thing. <laughs> The classical movie. Yeah. Uh, that one's on there as well. The Big Bang Theory seasons 1 to 11 or season 11 on Blu ray and DVD. Yep. The Flash seasons 4 or seasons 1 to 4. We've got The Walking Dead season 8 and The Walking Dead season 8, including art cards 
on Blu-ray. Okay. And also X-Men 1 to 3 on 4K Blu-ray. Interesting. So I did... Any of it you want to mention in there? Well, I need to say I've already pre-ordered um, Halloween. Yeah. Because I don't... I've never... I've only... I've, I owned a DVD of it back in the day and I've got a few digital copies now. But now the 4K version's out, I thought, well, I should order that, and that should be coming on the 1st of October, which isn't about a week away. Something like that, yeah. yeah. And I've also pre-ordered, well, that's why I pre-ordered, well enough, I've reported the 4K version of They Live, which is another John Carpenter movie. Yeah. Also, on that same frame of mind, I've ordered The Fog and Escape from New York. I think, to be honest, out of all of them, I'll only get Escape from New York. Well, if you go for the one I've gone, uh, in Amazon, yeah, that is a four-disc box set. How much, though? Twenty nine ninety nine. And there's posters <laughs> in there, there's a book in there, there's cards in there, photo- there's some cards in there as well. You have to look on Amazon, mm. you see what you think. But it's, I say, they, they're also bringing these out to the cinema. Yeah, well, uh, one showing, isn't it? Yeah, the fog. The one night showing. Yeah, the fog is the first one that's doing the rounds round our, round our way. I'm going to try and <clears throat> see if I can go to that. That's in Southampton. Yeah. But these are slowly being drip fed over a short time anyway. So where, uh, where we've got Halloween coming out on the 1st of October, mm-hmm. then we've got, October 29th to say hey, next month you've got two of those and then November for Escape from New York but uh, yeah really cool interesting to see how these films hold up in a 4K mm. restoration so especially after I've just seen Predator which we'll have a quick chat, chat about in a minute but uh, should we do the charts well, I'm sure there's a Predator in yep. there somewhere in a, somewhere along the line <laughs> Okay. okay. Shall I do this? Yeah. No, I do. Yeah. So we've got Christopher Robin at five, King of Thieves at four. We've got Crazy Rich Assassins at three, The Nun at two, and The Predator at number one, which mm. I'm going to say now is a stinker, from what I've heard. And it's not surprising, though, is it? <laughs> not really. No. Not really. I haven't. I, I I will see this when it comes free to watch on my Skybox, but that will be ooh, quite a while yet. But it doesn't interest me at all. You know, I did. We haven't got much in there for. I don't know if you got anything for me for for actual um, anything you've watched this week. Well, <clears throat> there is. I haven't put it in, but there's one program I've actually got into or series. Which is um, Jane the Virgin. Well, yeah, my wife has came that series. She watches that, when, well, normally when they're on, or, or she's catching up with them to go through the series, she's watching them actually now. But she's yeah. finished all of those, and she's still on Grey's, Grey's Anatomy at the moment, on season four out of 13. So mm. that keep her busy. Well, Jane the Virgin, for those of you who don't know, <laughs> is, a sto- is a comedy uh, about... A woman who is a virgin, and she's called Jane, and she's Mexican, or like that sort of. I, I just want to say that I would just fancy trying to imitate the guy in the background that does the voiceover. Oh yeah, <laughs> but um, she gets artificially inseminated by mistake, and uh, she gets artificially inseminated by mistake by the brother, oh, sorry, the sister of the guy whose sperm it is, who was going to be inseminating his, uh, she was going to be inseminating his wife, but she, because one, you know, Jane went in for an examination and the other one went in for artificial insemination, the woman who uh, did it got it mixed up and impregnated the wrong woman. Hmm. And it's one of those ones, it's a bit like 
arrested development in terms of it's got a voiceover going with it, as you'd already mentioned, Steve. It's funny, but yeah, I must admit, I just walked in and when she's watching it, and I've sat down occasionally, but I do find the guy that does that quite amusing, to be honest. Oh, yeah. And, and that's, that, to me, is what really sets it apart, is is that commentary. Yeah. I, I really like really like that and especially when he's doing the introductions because this the plot gets ludicrous oh, later I, bet, on. I mean i've walked in i mean i don't know how many seasons there are now but i say they've all been they've been all been shown in my household so yeah i think there's four seasons mm. to be honest and they're all quite long seasons as well but um no i've uh i've been watching it yeah. quite a bit i've really quite uh enjoyed it um the other thing as well is i started watching deadpool 2 Okay. Because I got that on 4K. Mm-hmm. And uh, quite enjoyed that as well so far. It's not as good as the last one. No. But, you know, when is a sequel ever not as good apart from The Empire Strikes Back? Or The Godfather 2? Oh, I can think of a few. Anyway, so I did en- I did enjoy Predator last night. At some, uh, uh, There's an occasional point where you get that little bit of graininess from an old 4K, from a an old movie that's been transferred to 4K, however the remaster has been done. Yeah. But 99% of it, it looks all gorgeous. The the, the jungles, the close-up images of, of, of the characters. The only one, it's not really a niggle. I just like to watch a movie sometimes with what you would see in a cinema screen. So with Predator, it's just on the it just comes out full on the TV. So I'm sure there's a slight bit cut off either end there, maybe. So it's sixteen by nine, not the yeah twenty three by whatever it yeah, is, yeah, eight or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. But uh, that's just one of my little. <laughs> that's a niggle. Of, I just like watching films in their proper ratio. Yes, so do I. Uh, to be honest, it's much better but, watching it that way. I, I'll have to have a look and put my Blu-ray back on now and see if that... I'm not even sure if that is, to be honest. I'll have to have a look at that. Mm. For Predator, but... Yeah, no, it's... Um, I've downloaded a, I've downloaded a couple of films to watch, but uh, I haven't got around to watching them yet. Mm. And Oh, we did... Oh, yeah, we did watch one film last night, and it was probably the wrong time of year to watch it. And this was Daddy's Home 2. All right, is it any good? It's all right. Let's just put it that way. But it's nice to see Mel yeah. Gibson in a movie. It's been a long time. Well, I mean, I think he's got a lot of face to... Uh, or a lot of respect to build back, hasn't he? After yeah. all of his comments. But I did whatever. like... I, John Lithgow is very funny as well. I, I do like him as an actor. Yeah, he um, is. And... Seeing this as a Christmas movie and someone wasn't being elf did disturb me a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Will Farrell. Yeah, but hey ho, you know. But it was all right. It's okay. It's, it's just a typical, you know. It's nothing. It's nothing. It's no. It's not going to win any Oscars. Let's put it that way. Yeah. But that's on Sky at the moment. If you've got Sky, you can go and download and watch that. Hmm. Anything else? Um. Only to say, three more days, and then we'll be in a good place. Well, they're advertising it on in the states at the minute. Have you seen? On, I've put a few on Twitter. There's some little promos for it, but I've not seen Netflix advertise it for us yet. Saying when it's going to oh. be coming out. Well, it should be soon. Thing is, though, it's going to be weekly, isn't it? Yeah, but it was weekly, the last one as well. Yeah, but we caught it that late that we watched the whole thing, some of us. But yeah. Yeah, yeah well, I mean, I caught it halfway through the last season. So, yeah. you know, I ended up watching half, binge watching half of the season, and then the other half of it, I uh, had to watch it weekly, <laughs> which was really <laughs> that frustrating. That is very painful for this show, isn't it? Cause I think I have got other things I'm watching at the minute. I am. It is that time of year where I watch my cooking programs, which love them or hate them, they get me in the kitchen anyway. Yeah. If you see my photographs when I was talking to Chef Alan the other day. Yeah, you're doing your rest in bloom and time. Yeah, it you? was fantastic, those those, pe- those poached pears and red wine. Absolutely gorgeous they were. Mm. But, uh, that puts a good book, in, good book in the wife's department. Yeah. 
So uh, we've well, got to do those things occasionally, haven't you? Yeah, but they, it, I mean, they were cooked in a whole bottle of red wine, by the way. <laughs> a whole bottle. Yeah, because I had four of them there. Yeah, and then what juice was left, I drank that afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, let's not talk about getting alcohol. <laughs> Should we go to questions? Yep, let's go to questions. John, what's happening to us? So Mark, as usual, even though he's laid up on his back and obviously get well soon, his first question is, now we're heading into the silly season, what do you consider when deciding which games to buy on release and which ones to leave? You could go and answer that one first. <laughs> Is it good? Well, I'm, te- I'm asking you the question, isn't I? Okay. <laughs> well, personally, it's a matter of, A, do I already like that as a franchise or that as a genre? Yeah. What format it's on? Whether or not it's a type of game that I will go for? Is it from a developer who... Um, I like, or is it just something that I really fancy? So, for example, mm. um, Planet Alpha, you know, I'm, I saw that. Well, I actually saw it, a video of it before EGX. Went yeah. to EGX and played it and bought it when <clears> it came home mm. because really, really liked the game as a, you know, as that sort of genre. It looks absolutely gorgeous it's something that I've, i felt i wanted to play but you know sometimes it it depends it's a hard question to answer because sometimes you can get hung up on the hype of it all especially if other people are playing it and you feel like you're missing out there is that and to be honest when there's maybe four or five games leading up from september to christmas it sometimes it's just too much yeah end of the day and you have to prioritize what you really want to play and what is your favorite franchise or two you know mm. but that just gives you you know they're going to be there next week can be there the week after they're not going anywhere are they and they'll be cheaper as well oh absolutely yeah so that's how i look at it i mean i've gone for one pre-order and that's my one of my favorite franchises so mm. that's how i've looked at it to be honest See, I don't do pre-orders particularly, and this is something I really know. I'm, you know, like for example, Forsaken, or well, I think I also pre-ordered Spider-Man, but you know, mm, yeah, ah, fair enough. Yeah, but I mean, do you feel this year it feels a bit of a slower silly season? You know, like there's there's not as much to look forward to. It depends how you look, what you're looking forward to, because Fours is out in three days' time, isn't it? Yeah, but that'll come with um, Game Pass. Yeah. True. But I'm just thinking about, in terms of the games that are to come. Yeah. <clears throat> um, what ones are you actually looking forward to? Well, I'm looking forward to Red Dead, to be honest. But when I get to play that, I don't know. And Fallout, really. Mm. Those are the big two. I mean, for the yes. I think even more so since I saw that Bond pack. Yeah, that does look look good. It it gives it a different a different sort of um, emphasis, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> I wonder if they're going to have sort of like themed chases and stuff like <coughs> that with it as well. <laughs> Well, you know what I'll be doing? You'll be getting that mute, that soundtrack out on, on that, on that, that on there, wouldn't you? Playing it. Yeah. I mean, for me, I'm looking forward to Hitman 2 mm. and just Cars. Yeah. As I say, it's, it's your favourite franchise, you know, at this time of year. Yeah. I'm actually quite intrigued at what Battlefield Five's going to be. As well. Yeah, that's true. Being delayed a bit, a little bit, isn't it, as well? So, yeah, I think it's only a few weeks difference. Um, 20th of November. Yeah, that's right. That is sort of last knockings for Christmas, isn't it? Uh, not as much na- last knockings as just cars, which is on the 4th. Yeah. 
True, true. But no. I don't feel this year there's there's the as many big ones as there has been in other years. Well, Maybe I mean, that says something about the market at the well, moment. Well, look at, I mean, I, I'm not off the top of my head, but look at what happened, what coming out in February. There's a slew of games coming out which could have come out before Christmas. Yeah. But they're not. Well, we've got Anthem coming, haven't we, in February? Yeah, we've got Resident Evil 2. Days Gone. Metro Exodus. Crackdown. Crackdown yeah. 3. DMC me, 5. Really, Division 2. For me, Resi 7s are going to be the purchase. Wolfenstein Young mm. Blood. So, Shenmue that 3, like a, that sounds Rage like 2. That Christmas session, doesn't it? It really sounds like a... That could be next Christmas. <laughs> next September. Yeah, and January, you've got uh, Onimusha Warlords and Ace Combat 7, Skies Unknown. Yep. Resident Evil 2, that's January. Kingdom oh, that Hearts 2, reason, uh, 3. <clears throat> no, Resident Evil 2 is 25th that's of January. So, you know, th- looking at that, there's one, two, three, four, four big titles coming out in January. And didn't we once moan that everything was coming out up to Christmas and then it was bland right through the summer and right through early winter? Yes. So we, we are getting what we want. I mean, you know, more for me here, but Anno 1800 is there <clears> as well. <throat> So I know that's not one that you'd have played, but no. you know because you're not into strategy games that much, are you? Yeah, I always fancy playing a Civ game. It's been a while, but you know. Yeah, so the, there's four big games coming out in mm. February. So it's, it seems that after Christmas is going to be more expensive than before this year, which is really unusual. Yeah, because it's a it's a yeah, yeah. excuse me. You know, from September to March. That's nearly six months, isn't it? Yeah. And you've got all those games coming out. Yeah. So, anyway. So, Mark's second question, which I suppose ties... The child race. Yeah, okay, like. sorry. I'm... <laughs> Go on, mate, you read it. I'll drink my, <laughs> my drink. <laughs> so, has the advent of subscription gaming like Xbox Games Pass and EA Access, change the way you buy games? I'm going to say yes to that. Because I'm probably not going to buy Forza like I normally do, and I'm probably going to do a couple of cheap months with uh, with Game Pass to, to give it a well. Yeah. Because that's going to feed your driving frenzy for that game. Yeah. And then... You can pick it up cheaper if you want to. Pick, if you like it that much, maybe pick it up later at a, at a you know holiday <clears throat> when it falls out again. Pass. Well, yeah, I don't know how long it'd be in there for, but at some point it would go on for se- for a sale. Yeah, and, then pick- and you'll probably be the ultimate edition that you'd get at that point anyway. Yeah, absolutely. It? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I know. I know. The bonuses of pre-ordering a game and you get to play it a few days early and you get some extra cards, but I'm not too fussed about that this time. But I do like. I do like to have the what's the word. I like to have the full experience with Forza. The ultimate yeah. edition. And have the VIP <coughs> VIP pass as well. If they turn around and said, right, okay, bond cars for everybody who pre orders, but no one else will be able to I'm get in. them. <laughs> <laughs> How did I know you were gonna say <laughs> that? Despite despite the game pass. Yeah, I'm in. <laughs> It does look, honestly, I watched that trailer a couple of times and I'm thinking, my God, that looks good. And because it's in England as well, it just makes it right, yeah. doesn't it? Well, I hope when they uh, do the Lotus going under the water bit that they play Bond 77. Well, I've, I've got a digital copy of that if you want to, if you want to copy to put on your hard drive and play it. No, I've, I've, I've got Bond 77 on CD. But what I mean is that when you're playing it, because that was the one that was on. The Spy You Loved Me, that was the, the upbeat Bond tune that they did in the 70s with Roger Moore. No, Bond 77 is from The Spy You Loved Me. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. No, what I'm saying is I've got yeah. a digital copy, so I can give you a copy of that and you can put it on a memory stick and play it while you're playing, that, while you're, while you're playing the game. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't need to, though. I've already got no, it. No, I mean, no. Yeah, you've <laughs> got a CD, though. What I'm saying is I've got a digital, because what you do is... I ripped I, it. Yeah, 
I've got it on MP3 okay, so as well. So you can put it on a memory stick, yeah. put it into the machine, and do it that way yeah. and play it at the same time. Yeah. But what I'm saying is they should build that into the game. Yeah, but then there's licenses involved. I mean, they've got the licenses okay for the, you know, from Eon Productions for the cars. Yeah. Um, but then it'd be a bit more... Well, if they're, going, if they're going to do it, they might as well do it properly. Oh, yeah. And I, I would like to see a jump somewhere in the game so you can do the uh, Man with the Golden Gun. Yeah, that is in the game, evidently, because it shows you it on the trailer. Yeah, but I don't know if that trailer is just showing you that or it's actually in no, the... No, <clears> that, no, that'll be the actual game. Yeah. Do you like... <laughs> they normally show you Have you ever you heard that. of Evil Knievel? <laughs> yes, I have. <laughs> no, roll over Evil Knievel. That's what he no, said. No, I, I think it was... Have you ever heard of him? But I have to double-check that. I'm sure that's what he says. Anyway, let's move on to Facebook. So okay. Ian Russo is asking us, what size hard drive do you think the next generation consoles will have? As big as possible. <laughs> Infinite. <laughs> Well, I mean, at the moment, I've got six terabytes on my Xbox. Which is ridiculous, really, isn't it? Yeah, because I need more space. I'm deleting stuff on the PlayStation just so I can download games at the moment. Well, I've got three terabytes on the PlayStation. I need need an external for that, really, don't I? Yeah, well, I'm looking at one of those eight terabyte ones now. Because sometimes when you have certain games that keep building on it and giving you more and more to play with it, it sort of builds that size up pretty big, doesn't it? <clears throat> yeah, well, look at like the Halo games. Exactly. They're like 70, 100 And the gigabytes. Forza games as well. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know whether or not it's actually because they're required to be that big or just Microsoft just made no, I, I think, you know, well, don't optimise the honest, coding. I think... Forza, for example, there's so much DLC in that game. It's unreal. The packs. Yeah. Car and you have packs. to download it all, even if you don't have it. Yeah, I think you do to a certain degree, and then you just unlock the code, and then, you know. Yeah, and that's the same in Destiny as well. Yeah, but. Uh, yeah, I think, I think they should at least double it on the next gen. Give us a. No, I, I I reckon that they should have, you should have, like, I don't know, by the time that we actually get to the next gen, which is two or three years Probably down 2020, the line. 2021. Yeah, so two to three years down the line from now, you know, that looking at how hard drive sizes are going up and the affordability of them, I reckon that you should have at least an 8 terabyte hard drive in well, there. At least. It depends on cost, doesn't it? This is all what it's all about. Yeah, but what I'm, you know, now you can get an 8 terabyte for just over 100 quid. About £119. Yeah. Do you know, and that's in an external I case. Know, I know, you know, I know we've got, they have these, this is all, it's going to stay the same that they're going to put a, They'll put a, there'll be a, a terabyte in there, and then you plug in what you want. Yeah, just for just for aesthetics and everything else, I'd like to have the idea that you can have with servers and raids, where you can unplug the hard drive when it's down powered, hot yeah. swapping, and just throw something else in yeah. there on a on a on a caddy on the handle, and it goes in the back, so you don't see the handle, it just clips in there, and it's done. Then you just turn it on. Well, why not just stick in a spare drive mm. bay on the back of the machine and then you can just replace a hard drive yeah. as you want? Microsoft can make can make something up that could fit one as well if you want to go down that route and they can then make a bit of money out of it. Yeah. Well, that's what they did with the 360, yeah, wasn't exactly. it? So, anyway. Who's next? Nicky Nick Wilson. Wilson. What three movies make you cry the most? His are Pokemon, the first movie, The Pursuit of <laughs> Happiness, and The Wrestler. None of them. <laughs> no. This is where the age. This is where the age comes into it, Nikki. <laughs> yes. And I'm yes, sure now Nikki knows how old you are. <laughs> he does. He does. Even though he keeps saying that I keep changing my age. I was born in 1971. <laughs> That's never changed. I am the same age. A year later than that, I went to see Live and Let Die as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why I'm, a, why I'm an old git. But anyway, um, so can you think of any movies that make you cry? Or have done? Would you like to own up to it even? 
Yeah. <laughs> Star Trek 3 and Generations. Don't you mean Star Trek 2? No, Star Trek 3. Because it destroyed the Enterprise. I think, well, personally, and, there, and there, wasn't a dry, there wasn't a dry, dry, <laughs> it wasn't a dry eye in the house when I went to see Star Trek 2 The Wrath of Khan when Spock died. In that funeral scene. Yeah. But I'm going to give you a couple of films. One you you despise. Is E.T. Yeah. And another one, actually, I think it's more, actually, it's more of a woman's movie, but Ghost, actually. Believe it or not. Yeah, well, it's quite an emotive that movie. That last five minutes of that film sort of, sort of breaks me a bit, but that's just my, that's just me as a human being, to be honest. Hmm. I have to admit, in terms of movie, realistically, because I was just saying that tongue in cheek about Star Trek. <laughs> Go on. But realistically, the thing that gets me the most in movies is if I get really immersed in a movie because of the soundtrack, and that can take me on with an emotional roller coaster much more than the acting can. Because to be honest, well, when they're ba- well, when they're I'm, playing the bagpipes. At Spock's funeral, actually, if I play the sound, because they they've actually added that to the expanded soundtrack I've got now, and if I play that, that can make me well up just listening to that. I'm thinking about it. Well, I'll, I'll tell you the the one that can actually make me <coughs> yeah. well up is four weddings and a funeral <laughs> at the funeral. Okay, where he's saying the poetry. Yeah, you know, because that is. A fantastic um, poem, you know, about switch off all the lights, yeah. whatever. I can't remember I think how funny, it goes some of those exactly, movies, but... some of those sort of uh, like <clears throat> Notting Hill and that, they can all pull the heartstrings a bit. Yeah, but I, but that was a particular bit that was really well acted mm. as well, and that's you know it was. A very powerful poem. It was a very powerful. He he did a very good portrayal on on that uh, on that scene, and uh, that made me mm. well up a bit. The one of my favourite films, My Life. Oh, that is yeah, yeah. When yeah. I watched that, you know, because that's about a guy who dies from mm. cancer, um, you know, but while and his wife's just having a baby, sort of thing, and that that's a very much an emotional roller coaster sort of film and Michael Keaton I know that he, a lot we think of him as like Beetlejuice and Batman but he's such a fantastic actor he's got so much more depth yeah excuse me <clears throat> and you know how he uh, you know how he how he does that that's really good um but I you know I'll, I'll be honest I was uh choked up when Captain Kirk died you know that was my childhood oh. hero. Well, come on, you have this, this one. This one. <coughs> oh, Han Solo died. No, Han so- No, actually. Oh, just Han about Solo to correct died. you on that, but you're just lucky enough you got that in. Yeah, because I knew he was dying before I went to see the film. You know, I knew that he was dying in it because someone who'd been to see it had confirmed it to me because I asked them specifically. What, so you could prepare yourself. Said, yes. Yes, actually. <laughs> <laughs> that that what that was actually the thing because I would have blubbered like a baby. I can tell you that now. And I was sat there, and it was the last time that I'd gone to the pictures with my dad and had taken <clears> my son. And Adam, uh, when Kylo stabbed yeah. him, and then he <clears> fell, Adam turned round and looked at me, and I was perfectly calm and calm. I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to cry. <laughs> I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to embarrass myself in front of my my child. And then Adam turned around. He put his hand very gently on my arm. And he said, are you all right, Dad? And I was like, yeah, I'm all right. <laughs> Pathetic. <laughs> <clears throat> Come on, mate. It's my childhood hero from when I was 40, from, from 1977. You know, I think that uh, I could be upset at the thought of seeing uh, okay. I'll, I'll give you that for, for you anyway okay would you like to do Alan Cochran's question 
Okay, so Alan's... Oh, actually, I don't think it's a question. It's mo- Oh, yes, it is. Sorry, I thought he was uh, answering the question. Right. Just watch The Goonies. I really want a sequel uh, back in the day. Is there a movie which you thought deserved a sequel and it didn't happen? Um, I don't know. I did, funnily enough, going back to the 80s, I did watch Weird Science over the weekend. Oh, she's yeah. gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous, that woman. She could, she could be in a... You've seen her now. In a bat bag and she still looked, looked like that. <laughs> I'll tell you what, take a pic- see a picture of her now. See oh, no, see. I've seen the pictures. <laughs> <laughs> um, some of those John Hughes movies that, they, that came out, all the, probably about Ferris Bueller, to know actually how what went on from there, because I think his, his, his sister hated his guts at one point until the end of the movie. I think Ferris Bueller was perfect as mm. a one-off. I... I it, it it was a one off. Could he get a could he get a second think, day off or something? I know it's I mean because no. kids do it all the time. <clears throat> do you know what I mean? What drive drive and crash your Ferrari no, and uh, be in the middle of a... <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Uh, yes. Kids are always uh, trying to find a way off school, or at least we were when we yeah. were kids. But <clears throat> no I I, I disagree with you there. I don't. I don't think that that would have made a good. You know, it 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 was a film on its yeah. own. It was unique, and that's what made movie, it special. I, I, I love it. It's really good. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, definitely. It's, I mean, it's one. There's, of the, there's always these rumours that kick around, and one film I would like to see the sequel to. It's it's sort of it's been it's been humming and ahhing for for the last couple of years, and I thought I saw it confirmed at one point, but we're still waiting to hear. And again, we're talking about Michael yeah. Keaton. And the film I went about is Beetlejuice. Mm. Again, marvellous film. And being, him being in the dead zone, as such, should we say, <clears throat> you can have a new set of characters that come across him. Yes. Can you think of anything else? Any any other anything comes to mind for you? Yes, Flash Gordon. Did you say Flash Gordon then? <laughs> no, I said <laughs> Flash. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> no, uh, the uh, Sam Jones Flash Gordon, because that was set up for the return of Ming at the end of the. Film. Oh yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah, I I, I agree. Yeah. And I think that would have been absolutely fantastic to maybe have a trilogy of them where eventually he gets back to Earth. But it was sort of like left there and it just, mm, I want another one. <laughs> you know, and the nearest that we get is, you know, um, Ted 1 yeah. and 2. <laughs> Ted 1 and 2. I need to go back and just watch those scenes just to, just to, just to have a, you know. Oh, yeah. Because, see, the unfortunate thing of today's movies, if they're a hit, they're given a sequel sort of off the back, aren't they? Yes. Where there are there are a lot <clears> of <throat> 80s movies. Actually, it's, it's the old one or two that had a prequel, which actually worked quite well. Mm. But uh, a lot of the, the one-off movies that we did have, maybe they will stay, you know. I remember Cool Running, for example, even though it was based on a true story yeah. and... Uncle Buck, you know, all those sort of movies that came out. Throw Mama from a Train. Yeah, that one, not so much. Was that one with Sylvester Stallone? No, that was Billy Crystal. Okay. Well, actually, he did, he did have a sequel in one of his movies, didn't he, where they went, they went out? Yeah, City Slickers. <laughs> I'll tell you one <laughs> that, that I wish that they'd have completed, well, two that they'd have completed yeah. the series, is Dune. Right. And also, they did 2001 and 2010. There was then 2061 and 3001 in terms of books. And I would love to see those taken to the big, you know, the big screen. Which one was that last one again? 
Three thousand. Oh, okay. So that you know, th- there's a those ones would have been really good to see. And also, there was a great film called uh, Dark City. I've talked about that before. I think you were going to look watch that at some point. I'd go and try and yeah. watch it. Uh, but that would have been uh, good to have had a sequel yeah. to. I mean, most of the big movies over the years, you know, there's there's there's, there's, there's numerous. I mean, I know. I know for, for, um, just a few examples. I just Googled it, actually, and some of the ones I mentioned are here. Mm. But I'm surprised E.T. never got a sequel, to be honest. Um, I know it's not your favourite movie. Um, no. We've got Forrest Gump. Again, I think that that's special because it was of yeah. itself. I mean, some it's something like... Was it Elf 2? Possibly. <laughs> oh, God, no. No. <laughs> uh, what else have we got here? Uh, Breakfast Club 10... They said Breakfast Club 10 years later would be interesting. And then obviously here, Ferris Bueller 2, Another Day Off. See, that would have worked. Maybe if they did it now, where he was bunking off work. Yeah, no, that... Because he's... He could still do that. I don't know whether they want to see mm. Matrix 4 or Godfather 4, to be honest with you. I don't think that would, um, would probably work. The Matrix needs a new trilogy. That's If you're going to do The Matrix, you don't just mm. do 4, you do another trilogy and you don't have all of the stupid CGI that they had on the last one. Yeah. That's true. We did have Airplane 2, the sequel. <laughs> Yeah, with William Shatner. <laughs> and the blinking lights. Uh, twins, that was going to happen at one point, wasn't it? Yeah. And I didn't, thought, didn't think that would ever happen. Unfortunately, there was going to be a Mrs. Doubtfire 2 at one point, but um, obviously that was never going to happen. Mm. Roger Rabbit. Yeah, that was one that was, uh, that was very popular yeah, at the yeah. time, wasn't it? So, yeah, there's a few that could have happened. Mm. Yeah, what about I Am Legend? Because that that deserved a sequel. Do you know what? Funnily enough, I was looking at that as well, and that there is actually more material to go with that as well. It's from a book, isn't it, if I remember rightly? It's a comic, comic isn't it? Yeah. A graphic novel. <clears throat> but the way that finished, you know yeah. there was more. there's more story to be told. Oh, heck you know. yeah. Yeah, most definitely. It's funny because... Um, even though we never got an actual Unbreakable 2, we are actually getting some sort of sequel for that, aren't we? Well, no, because um, that one with McAvoy mm. uh, was evidently now supposed to be because he's playing the same character. Was it Split or something like that? Oh, I can't remember <clears throat> I can't what remember it was enough. called. Yeah, there, there was a... <clears throat> yeah, well, he's playing the same character in Mr. Mm, Glass. It, yeah. Um, so, effectively speaking, that is yeah. the sequel. That's right. So, and that's a, and Mr. Glass is the third one in the trilogy. Yeah, yeah. Um, one more that was rumoured, I think rumoured many times, but it's had more than one sequel. But then again, I think I'd rather stick to the first two films that has been out, and that's uh, Beverly Hills Cop. Mm. There's rumours of another one, even a TV show materialising out of it with Eddie Murphy doing some <clears throat> cameo work in it. But yeah. uh, that sort of film, I think the two, the first two is worth just thinking about and putting the rest to bed, to be honest. But uh, mm. It was split, that movie. Yeah. Yeah. 2016, and then Glasses out next year. Cool. Okay. Let's go to Chris Pedersen's question. And with the recent release of Spider-Man, which superhero would you like to see have its, their own game? Are we going to take this as in general or ones who haven't had their own I don't, game? It doesn't matter which, really. I mean, I know Batman deserves another shot at it somewhere along the line. Batman's had some good yeah. games, though, hasn't he? You know, he's had four, four outings in the Arkham game. I know that three of them are only supposed to be official and then the other ones 
you mm. know, like a what, unofficial. Just speaking about Batman quickly, what's Batman VR like? That I, yeah, yeah, it's good. I mean, it's uh, it's a good story uh, mm. on that one, and uh, it uses VR in quite a good effect. It is the warping mechanism. On oh, that, is it? Though. I'm not. Well, <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't. I wouldn't worry about that though, to be quite honest, because it's more about using Batman's gadgets and investigating yeah, yeah. and stuff like that as well. Uh, one one game that never really materialised. I think we had one back in the day on the Xbox, but a very early time was Superman. Yeah, I think the problem is is that Superman. It's very difficult to actually portray Superman in a way where he's just not going to stuff everything that <laughs> he's comes so strong across. and he can fly everywhere. It's not like you don't ground yeah. him, do you? Yeah, I mean, the Green Lantern had a a good game. Yeah. I enjoyed the Green Lantern game in the <clears> last <throat> gen. Mind you, with Superman, you could have the storyline that he has lost his powers for a while with the uh, with Kryptonite, so you could ground him on the floor for a bit. Yeah, even when they've done that, though, it's still not worked yeah. properly. How about uh, the Flash? Wolverines. How about the Flash? Mm. I'm not so sure. I mean, we've all had little snippets so sure. of these characters. If you played a Lego game, <laughs> yeah, they're quite, They're all pretty good in that, to be honest. Well, I mean, if you can have a good Iron Man game and get get someone actually to, well, again, there's been two Iron Man games, yeah. hasn't there? Well, they were probably pretty poor. No, they were not too yeah. bad actually, on the mm. three sixty. Um, there's been X Men games as well. Yeah. What about an Ant Man game? Don't know if that would interest me. Mind you, the, the idea of actually being able to be made large or small could be an enticing mechanic. Yes. Yeah. There's been a Guardians of the Galaxy game, albeit a Telltale game. Mm. How about Thor? Um, what about Thor? Yeah. I was about to say <laughs> Thor as well. <laughs> Have it with Loki as well. Double them up. Yeah. Loki yeah. could be the bad guy. That'd be quite cool. Or Doctor Strange. Yeah, yeah. There's quite a few good ideas that could, you know. But I think, I think we'd be say we'd be sick of it because we've got enough of them in the cinema. I mm. don't think so. Especially not if they come out the quality of Spider Man. No, if that yes, that's true. If that was to happen, I think. What about going down the lines of um, the way that? Sony are producing the the Spider Man spin off movies, and taking a part of the villain like Venom. Yeah, along with Tobey Maguire, isn't it? What's the matter with Tobey <laughs> Maguire? Tobey Maguire's uh, all right. I like him as Spider Man. Yeah, he just got a bit. He got a bit sickly come the end of the, of the third one. Yeah, but that was a whole thing about. That was Venom, though, wasn't it, doing it to him? Because hmm. it made him act like an idiot. Yeah, he was a bit of a twat. <laughs> <sighs> anyway, do you want to go to Nikki's question? Okay, so who's your favourite Batman, Superman and Spider-Man? His is Ben Affleck, Dean Kane, and Tobey Maguire. So... <clears throat> favorite Batman, I think I'm going to still put Michael Keaton in there from that era of Batman. As much as yeah. I loved um, the the trilogy that came after that, I just think Michael Keaton can play very dark, creepy characters, and playing that his persona as Batman, I think he did that marvelous. To be honest, mm. so. Who would you go for Batman? I'm going to say Christian Bale. I liked him as Batman a lot. Yeah, no, he was good, yeah. But I I really did like Michael Keaton up until Christian Bale took the, you know, the, the took on the cape. Um Michael Keaton was my favorite. Yeah, Batman. because obviously we had a we had a few lucky dips for Batman. <sighs> Or unlucky dips. Yeah. You know, Val Kilmer. <laughs> but it was like, put your hand in the... Put your hand, what we got? Oh. George Clooney. 
Yeah. I mean, Ad- Adam West, yeah, I don't I don't think you can compare no, Adam I West. I don't think you put him in the mix anyway, because that's different. Uh, yeah, because that was a camp comedy, and, that was, and it was d- done deliberately that That was way. a TV show from the 60s that it doesn't come in the same category, no. to be honest. But as a kid, I loved the Adam West Batman. Oh, God, yeah. Same with the Superman. I used to love watching Superman. Yeah. They were black and white, I think, remember rightly? Yeah. But if I'm going to put... I think I'm going to I'm going to say Christopher Reeve for Superman for me. Well, Christopher Reeve was a Superman who I grew up with. Yeah. But to be honest, I really did like Dean Cain's uh, Superman as well and the Lois and Clark series. And yeah. plus the fact he did cop off with Terry Hatcher when she was hot. Well, she was. Those, those are the days when she was hot, I and mean, she even got to be in that Bond movie and. Seeing them suspenders and stockings, well, you know, what can I yeah. say? <laughs> Spider Man. Thing is, I'm going to have to say Tobey Maguire because the first two movies. But he wasn't the. That, he's more than him's played Spider Man. Yeah, I know, I know. But you know, I actually, it's funny, you know, when you look forward to, to movies coming out and, you, and mm. trailers and you're in, you've got an anticipation for a film that you can't wait to watch. I had that with those two Spider Man movies. Mm. You know, I mean. Superman, get quickly get back to him. I mean, there was one Superman Returns. It's very difficult to watch now, considering he's now in now he's in DC Legends of Tomorrow. Yeah, and he's been in Arrow. So that's a that's a hard one to pull that one. But he he looks quite young in that. Mm. But uh, any other Spider Man you could could match up with that? Do you think or not? What, you mean actors to play as Spider-Man? Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, for a long time, you know, I I don't think Andrew Garfield, I think he played a different Spider-Man. I think they tried to do something different with it, and for me it didn't work. Mm. It wasn't the Peter Parker that it should have been. The Spider-Man sort of character was a bit better, but I don't know. While I enjoyed the movies, I didn't... He wasn't the best Spider-Man. For a long time, I've always thought Tobey Maguire has been the best Spider-Man out there, but actually, Tom Holland's really won me over as Spider-Man. You know, he's um, he's been in three movies now. Yeah, even though some of them have been sort of parts, aren't they, really? They're not full movies for him, but... No, but he's he's still been in three movies. He was in Civil War. He was in, uh, obviously, Homecoming, which was mm. a Spider-Man movie. And also the um, Infinity War. And I think he's played the part really well, much more like what I would have thought Spider-Man would have been, Mm. to be honest. So, yeah, I'm going to say Tom Holland, actually. I never thought I'd hear hear myself say that, but, (laughs) you know, I've I've been really happy with his rendition of Spider-Man. And I think that when... uh, his bit at the end of the last movie, mm. um, the the um, what do you call it, the Infinity War. I think he did that very well, as well. So yeah, I'm going to say Tom Holland. Okay, fair enough. So, has Nicky got a second question? He here? has indeed. He sneaked in a second one. Do you lend people games and Blu-rays? I don't anymore, as they tend to just keep them, scratch the disc, or lose the manuals. Do you know what? I totally agree to a certain degree on that. Mm. I mean, I used to sometimes lend people bits and pieces and, and that, and they never look after them. They come back in a right state. You think, did you, did you watch it or did you sit on it? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Well, I mean, the first time that I ever learned that lesson hard, because I used to loan someone I was friends with, mm stuff all the time and he respected my stuff and I would get it back in exactly the same state as it started off with and then when I uh, years ago I lent someone the Final Fantasy 7 guide which I had just bought I hadn't you know I just bought it Mm. he said oh I'm stuck on a bit can I borrow it for a couple of days And I loaned him it, um, expecting to get it back in basically the same state as that I handed it in. Yeah. When it came back, I had to nag the guy for it mm. for weeks. It was something like eight months later 
<clears throat> and it had ring marks of coffee cups, coffee stains in. It had creases down, you know, the, the spine and on the front cover, and it was dog-eared. And it was in a disgusting state. And I just said to him, you're taking the mick. He never, he never apologised or anything. Mm. And so I just said, well, I'm not loaning him anything else. But I have loaned people stuff uh, since then. But it's like, for example, I loaned, you know, someone uh, the Star Wars trilogy because I'd never seen it. Yeah. And that was like six, seven months ago. Still waiting for them to watch Return of the Jedi. How long does it take? Well, actually, I think... I- do you know what I think? I think, I think, with the way media, digital media, is now put around, mm. shouldn't need to with a lot of stuff, should you? No. You know, oh, this is. Uh, it's funny because I was talking to Chris the other day. Yeah. And we were chatting about Predator because he reported it, and I'm like, yeah, right. And I said, you know, I just watched Christine twice in in the last month. I mean, oh, I've not really seen that one. Then he's, he takes me out that evening saying, I've just turned the TV on and Christine's on, <laughs> on the telly. Mind you, it's on Netflix anyway, but, you know, brilliant movie. Yeah, but, I know, know what you mean. I know what you mean. Yeah. But, I mean, I, I don't mind, as long as people look after stuff, I don't mind loading them it. But if I loan someone it and then if it comes back... But if you treat it, you treat it how you would treat it, do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like the very few times I've borrowed other people's stuff, I always look after it better than I look after my own, and I look after my own stuff really well. Yeah. You know, it's just a matter of respect sort of thing. But also, the other thing is, is about, if some, you loan someone off, us uh, loan someone something, you expect it back within a reasonable time frame. It's, you know, but I hate it when you have to start saying to people, have you finished with it? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but if you're not going to if you're not going to get time to do it, then you just give it back. Say, I never, you know, don't worry, Pete, take it back. You, you, yeah, can I, I borrow it another time? And I borrow it another yeah. time. Yeah, that's what you do. Yeah, exactly. Okay, last question from Craig. Yeah. Now I don't think I've actually seen this one yet, but we can we we'll talk about it. So, what's your views on companies using old movie stars and films to advertise? He's given an example of Ghostbusters and Audrey Hepburn, uh, which have been coming on the Halifax. Adverts, mm. and I think he's saying here that they take on the place of you know, Bill Murray and Audrey Hepburn. CGI character is shameful. This actress is dead because uh, they actually did another one. They did the Wizard of Oz, didn't they? Yes, they did. I do remember doing that one? I didn't. I thought that the uh, Audrey Hepburn one was one where. Because there was a actor as well. I don't know who he was called. Because to be honest, that sort of era of uh, movie stars, I'm have no interest in at all. Well, you're um, not going to know who the. I mean, unless you know. Well, Audrey Hepburn is pretty much pretty famous. Yeah. If you know, it, if you know your movies, was, you'll know who she is. Yeah, but I'm sure that that uh, that advert that he was on about with Audrey Hepburn was for chocolate. Because she sat in the back of a car and there's a bloke on a bus and then suddenly he's her chauffeur. Oh, that one was. <clears throat> Cabris. Yeah. When she was in, in traffic in France. Yes. In, in uh, Saint Tropez or somewhere, or something, somewhere like that. And yet, yet, yeah. She, yeah. That's the one. But the male actor is someone famous as well, isn't he? I can't remember now. I'm sure he is. But anyway, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. So what, what's your view, said Steve? Well, I, you know, I'm, it's okay. I mean, I, I don't think it's wrong to use. You, I think it's probably, what's the word? It, it, it it's giving you, um, <clears throat> how do I put it? You're celebrating a, a famous actor that was around when you, you when you were probably not even born or, or necessarily, mm. and just showing you that you know these 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 are these were fabulous actors and actresses at the time. So it just sort of highlights who they were and. May even prompt you to look up a, a, a maybe and watch one of their movies. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Not necessarily Audrey Hepburn, but if, I don't care what anyone says. Casablanca is still a good movie by his standards. Yeah. And uh, didn't they use? Didn't they use that in, in an advert? Do you remember when uh, you know the, the the classic line when the, at the bar at the at the yeah uh, I think they did yeah at the piano when she's saying you know saying you know. 
play it for me one more time. I can't remember what the advert was now. Mm. But I mean, it, I think it perks people up for advertisement, I think, because movies, I think if you were sitting there chatting and you didn't have the option to fast forward your adverts, you would sort of perk up and look at that, wouldn't you, compared to most? Yeah. But, I mean, to be honest, you can extend this. Uh, well, he's already well, said about films as well. But because we've got I mean, Star Wars. Yeah, I, I thought I'd let you say that bit because I was going to mention it. But yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, you know, Rogue One. We had Peter Cushing. Yeah, and I think that was just—he was such a superb actor. I mean, forget Star Wars. If you go back to what that what he did over the years in the horror industry with with Christopher Lee when he was playing Van Helsing and stuff like that. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. But but we're not talking about that, are we? We're talking about the use of his likeness. Yes, yeah, I know. But what I'm saying, and the celebration of a of a of an actor who's who's passed away has done some fantastic stuff over the years. It might prompt you to go back and see some of those movies. Still, you know, again. it it might do. But pers- personally, and this is one where I think we were going to have a debate on. I I don't have a problem with it on a proviso mm. that the <clears> family <throat> of the dead actor or actress has consented. Well, he must have consented because you don't throw Audrey Hepburn into an advert for no reason at all, do you? No. The lawyer's getting on your back and suing your ass off you. Yeah, exactly. So, to, to my mind, and, that, you know, for Star Wars, that's exactly what they did. Mm. Uh, because there was all of this discussion online when uh, Carrie Fisher had died about, oh, for the next Star Wars film... You know, it'd be disgusting if they um, did what they did at the end of A New Hope and put Carrie yeah. Fisher in that way. Well, actually, no, I don't think it, it is a disgusting thing. In a matter of fact, I think if anything, that proves how synonymous that person is to that role, that that you you can't imagine another person with you know having their like uh, not having their likeness playing that role, mm. and I think that that is testament to that actor or actress. To be honest with you, the fact that they didn't recast <clears throat> Peter Cushing's role to an actor who looked vaguely familiar, but actually went to the expense that they did, which was probably much more than just getting an actor in to do it to digitally recreate him in the way that they did. And I think that says what presence that actor had on that role. And I think that that is a homage to them, not an insult. Well, it is. I mean, actually, I've just just Googled it about CGI. And uh, there's one here with a list. And... The third one I come up against, number 13, is Audrey Hepburn, the Galaxy Chocolate commercial. Mm. You know. And Peter Cushion was there as well. Actually, F- um, Philip Seymour Hoffman in The Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 2. Yeah. Again, that was CGI'd a bit. Not, well, even, what about uh, him who died of um, The Fast and the Furious? Yeah. Where they got his brother in and then they dubbed his face over. And they did the same for John Candy in his last film when he died halfway through it. Yeah. So there's there's a load there, believe it or not. You can. I mean, what about? Here's a good example. What about Forrest Gump? Well, again, that that was very in keeping with the movie, wasn't it? Yeah. In terms, you know, I I think I think the main thing is it has to be done tastefully. Mm. You know, and I mean by that. I think it would be disrespectful if, for example, they stuck Audrey Hepburn's face on a porn video. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Because that's something she would have never have consented to have done. Whereas, you know, to be honest, I felt that the Galaxy advert was a bit of a waste of time going to the expense of the way that they, they did that. I don't think it added anything to it. Whereas, you look at Rogue One, you look at the John Candy film, you look at the Fast and the Furious, all of these ones where people have had their faces dubbed on because they've died. I think that that is an entirely yeah. different well, thing and a good homage to the actors who In this list I was roles. looking at quickly, what do you reckon number one was? No idea. It's Marlon Brando. 
on what? Superman Returns. Yes. Which was what I was on about earlier. Ah, uh, but th- but that no, well, that's not quite right though, is it? Because on Superman Returns, they got Marlon Brando. I remember watching a film about this. So what got Marlon Brando to read out all of these lines, and he was saying they were completely incomprehensible to him, and then he died afterwards. Yeah, but Superman Returns, he's was he was already dead. Remember? So this yeah, was, but they just I thought so they the, used stock footage. So they were using footage from Superman the movie. Yeah, which wasn't used. But that's different to. Graphic, uh, digitally recreated, but they, but they had, to, they had to re, they had, they had to enhance that that image on the screen as well. So that was CGI'd yeah. up. But anyway, it's a it's a big minefield anyway on that on that scenario. But uh, but yeah, I, th- I think that, like I said, I think the key is that it's done tastefully and done in keeping with something that that actor would have consented to and that the family has consented because you know um, imagine taking an actor who died and putting him in a, a film that they would have actually morally and ethically been against, mm. you know, and then trying to make money out of it, that's wrong. Like, for example, the example of Audrey Hepburn in the middle of a porn movie. That doing something like that would be completely wrong because the actor would not have consented. No, because you would, you'd get yeah, but you would, but you would yeah, you would get the lawyers come crushing down on whoever that yeah. was anyway. And so. to be honest, so no, no one, no one would be stupid. Enough to be to honest, do that. I just thought that the Galaxy advert was just stupid, rather than offensive. No, I thought it. I thought it. To be honest, it paid homage to her. I just, uh, per- personally, personally, I just, I, I think it was a nothing. I, I don't, you know, it was. Yeah, I, I had no feelings about it one way or the other, but I think you know other stuff. There's been you know good examples of. Yeah, because it was very much when she was at um, breakfast at Tiffany's, and that was the look yeah. they had there for yeah. it. But yeah, you know, it's horses. It horses. is. It is a good one for a debate. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, no Twitter question, so. We can call it a night. Hurrah. Early finish. Good, because I need to go somewhere. Anyway, details. So my Twitter is at Steve007. PSN ID is the real <coughs> Steve007. Xbox Steve007. Email at Steve007 at popculturegamers.com. Have you actually hey, checked any of those you... emails yet? <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't get on it yet. I've got to talk to you about that. Anyway, by the by. And if anyone has, I apologise. I will email you back personally. And obviously, I've got my YouTube channel for, for movies and soundtracks, which I've just put on there, the Star Trek one. And I've got a few more to do now because I've had a few in the post, so I'll be doing more of that. Anyway, yourself. Uh, YouTube channels, Hidden Reese Jones, uh, on Twitter, PSN, Xbox Live, Steam, and everything else. It's H E R J U K. Also, H-E-R-J-U-K at popculturegamers.co.uk. You can just contact us generally by podcast at popculturegamers.co.uk. We have a Facebook group called Pop Culture Gamers. I wonder why we called that. And then also we have our website, which is popculturegamers.podbean.com. And you can also follow the show on Twitter as well as ourselves at at popculturegamer. No S. So, I'll call that a wrap as we talk about movies. Yep. So, it's a good night from me. And it's a good night from him. Good night. Good night. You are about to witness history in the making. (laughs) 